This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hi guys, so I'm here with another video in the Li Ming work log series and this time I'm going to be finishing up her wand. These patterns are now up on my store Envy, but they were originally up like months ago on my Patreon. So if you want patterns as soon as I release them, Patreon is the place to go. Anyway, so all I'm doing is creating the base of the wand. I have a PVC pipe for the handle. I'm adding the couple extra layers that it has using EVA foam and then I'm adding this extra bit of cardboard because the top of the wand is going to sit on top of the PVC pipe because I didn't have a long enough PVC pipe. So I'm kind of just extending that with cardboard so that it would have this sturdy structure in it and not just like plop off of the PVC pipe. So yeah, all I'm still doing here is just adding on the different bottom layer that she has just using a rectangle strip of cardboard and then cutting it to fit the size of my PVC pipe. I didn't think a pattern for this piece because this really just depends on the size pipe you have. And here it's just back to extending out that top half so that the head of the wand will hold up well. It's lots and lots of hot glue. So this is the ring that goes around the pipe. I'm just gluing two six millimeter pieces of EVA foam together and then I'm cutting at an angle around both sides of the edges just so that they have this angled bubbled shape to it and I will take a dremel and smooth that all out so that it's not all rough and choppy like it is right now and make it even more angled because it is like this circular but like it's angly and diamondy. I don't really know how to explain it but it's that sort of shape. It needs to have these bubbled edges. While I got my Dremel out, I go ahead and also just kind of sand down the edges and add any bubbling where needed to the pieces that will become the top part of her wand, as well as any other pieces of the wand in general, just because it's easier to get all those things out of the way at once. This is the piece that is right below the very top part of her wand. It's still kind of like a part of the handle, but not. It's a very wide part of the handle. And what I did to have it come at this angle that it's supposed to have is just bevel those inner edges and then glue them together. And then I will glue those each half, one at a time, onto the cardboard pieces that you can kind of see in the background there and that we did earlier as well as to the handle itself.
After I glue one on, I go ahead and cut off this excess part of cardboard that is still sticking out because I didn't make it bigger than needed just so that I didn't have to try to size it perfectly. And I needed it to be bigger because if it was smaller, then it would be a pain to try to fix or change that. So there is going to be a bit of a weird gap or seam, li seam line here. So to fix that, I kind of just fill it in with hot glue to start and smooth it out as it gets a bit cooler with my fingers and I will later fill it with wood filling. You'll see that in a bit though. Now I'm gluing on the, uh, or gluing together the top part of the wand. I'm gluing both of the bottom pieces together and then I glue both of the top pieces together and then I glue both of the sides of those pieces together. You'll see if you know how the wand looks, you know that it has like this moon shape and it has a bottom half and a top half and they kind of meet almost like this oddly moon-shaped diamond or pyramid or whatever that shape would be called. Yeah, so this is where I start to glue the top and the bottom half together. Now it's time to attach that top piece onto the rest of the wand. So I'm just kind of cutting out a circle that would be big enough to fit that piece that's right below it, that very wide part of the handle, and I'm just like trying it out, fitting it in every th so often to see if it fits yet, and then taking away a little bit as I go along, and when it gets fairly close, I start to use the Dremel instead of a pair of scissors so that the hole will be neater and I don't take off as much as once. And then it fits perfectly and I just glue that together using hot glue with a lot of hot glue along the inside. To create that wavy pattern that that part of the handle has is that you can see where I'm working on. I just cut out very thin strips of thin EVA foam. I think this was about three millimeters thick 
and I just make it have that wave pattern as I glue it along. To create the band along that very top part of this section, I just cut out another rectangle about the size that I wanted and then lay it down and cut off any extra bits. It's really just winging the small details and using a lot of thin strips of EVA foam wherever you need it. I'm also going ahead and capping off the ends of this because it is hollow and there is this gaping hole on either end. I just take a thin piece of EVA foam about two or three millimeters thick and then glue that on, just like slap it on and cut off the excess. Now I'm creating a whole lot of spikes for her. I guess it's not a whole lot since she only has six. But there's a whole lot of pieces that go into making the spikes because they're like this odd shape and very thick or like wide. And then it also has like this little holder section, I guess you would call it. Anyways, I'm gluing all of those together and then resizing that bottom part to better fit the uh, way the wand ended up shaping or how wide it ended up being. You'll see in a little bit when I have to go back and I'm like, okay, now this fits around the bend and glue that into place. This is that part I was just talking about where I have to kind of just recut these little ends because originally that angle was too narrow, I guess you would say. It needed to be widened a bit just so that it better fit around that piece without like looking weird or like misshaping it. But it was easy to figure out because you just kind of take off a little of piece at a time and then glue it on once you once it fits right. And now I am filling all of the seam lines using wood filler. It's just this tub of I think it's called plastic wood filler that I got from Home Depot and I'm just using my fingers even though I'm pretty sure you should use gloves or popsicle sticks or something. Once I have done a few layers of wood primer, or not wood primer, wood filler, and then sanded all that down and smoothed it out to the best of my abilities, I go ahead and begin layering it, or layering the wand in wood glue. I do about five or seven layers of wood glue, letting it fully dry in between each layer.
Once the wood glue is dry, I sprayed it with a spray paint primer, then sprayed most of the entire thing gold since there's a lot of gold pieces. And now I'm going through and painting any piece that is supposed to be black using black acrylic. And I do a couple layers of black acrylic because it is a bit thin with just one layer and kind of patchy looking. So I think I end up doing about three layers of black acrylic before I seal, seal it with a glossy spray paint coat. Also add in shading using black oil paint and that finishes up the painting. So now we move on to attaching the orb. I would have used clear fish line wire, whatever it's called, like how most people usually use, but I didn't have any and I was short on time so I couldn't order any and I couldn't run out to the store. So I just used this gold wire that I had lying around and I kind of poked that through the foam. I think I attached it to a needle like you would if you were sewing it. And then I slowly tightened each side until the orb sit to the height I wanted it to sit. And then tied and twisted the wire back around itself. And then added a dab of hot glue to make sure it was super secure and not going to fall apart. So that is it for this work log. I think I only have one left after this and it's like all the accessories and the little bits that I missed and didn't make an entirely separate video for. If you're interested in how I made any of her other armor pieces, check out the rest of the work logs in this series and I have a bunch on a lot of other cosplays I've done as well. So yeah, check those out. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful even with my sucky explanations of things. Have a lovely day.